Aloha YouTube viewers, Jeremy Wright here. I'm showing you something I just loaded a video short of. You can catch this, but this is one of my window jar vases. This one has sand in the bottom. Many, many plants. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, at least 11 species of plants in here, just from a glance, including Richia. Um, all, there's just all kinds of stuff in there. Uh, so Swassertang, Ludwigia, Creeping Jenny, a Crypt, uh, Mosses. Honestly, the Ricci is probably my favorite thing in here. But this tank is something special. I call it a tank. It's a, you know, a bowl, a window jar. But let's get a closer look in here. It's been a while since I've shown this. Daphnia, see the little critters buzzing around in there? This colony has been going unfiltered, unaerated since, gosh, almost a year. And it does great. Every once in a while, I pull a little bit of algae out. I get some hair algae uh, down in the bottom. Years ago, my Richia would get thread algae, which is something significantly different. It grows kind of sideways across the top of uh, water systems. The stuff I've got in here just kind of grows up from the bottom from time to time. And I, I apologize for the glare, but looking back in here, let's see if we can see the little guys. There are many, many of them. As I mentioned, it's been going for a long time. Now, normally people say Daphne cultures or, or other microinvertebrate uh, fish food type stuff that aquarists and aquatics keepers often have. They, they say, oh, these Daphne colonies don't go very long, you'll keep them for a while, and then they just die. Well, that's not true if you put them in something like this. So these guys are, for one, a regular source of food for my fish fry, but also I have to do a little bit of extra maintenance. And I've loaded videos previously of this, but my maintenance for this tank comes in the form of this. From time to time, I get to the top, and you can see there's, or you might not, yeah, you can. There's a little bit of surface film here. Surface film is something that I have spoken and written in depth about. If you'd like some more information about that, check out one of the articles I've written, uh, a technical article at the Arkansas Planet Aquarium Club Facebook group. There's a lot of uh, really deep science that's written in a way that uh, the layperson can understand, but there's a lot that happens in water that people usually don't talk about. It's kind of off the radar. Surface film is one of those things. So because this is an unfiltered and unaerated system, water's not really circulating aside from convection and whatever little bit of water those tiny guys move around. But, and you know, from time to time my hand goes down there. But this is basically a still water system. Still water systems have the opportunity or luxury, however you may be viewing it, to accumulate surface film. What that is, it's not just proteins and little bits of scuzz, it's solids, it is anything that's hydrophobic, things that water sort of pushes away, and it ends up up here in that surface level. So there's a layer of, uh, I don't know, maybe, four or five water molecules at the top of any surface of still water where we actually have a fifth phase of matter forming. It's something that science isn't really describing too well as of yet, but it's been known since probably the 1990s. And surface film is an additional, um, what do you call it, phenomenon that can happen anytime there's still water. So I have to use this little guy to dip off that surface film, scuzz, whatever you want to call it, all the same. It is, like I said, proteins, hydrophobic uh, molecules. It's also solids, uh, minerals, just, just about anything that can float up and rise out of the water column or fall from the air below and land on that. So really the only maintenance I do to this little thing is scooping up a bit of, of surface scuzz from time to time. Otherwise, this little tank 
never gets anything like algicide or um, any sort of poison. It's 100% organic, has been from its onset. It does not get additional food. These little critters eat detritus, which is the, the bits of plant matter that fall down or are released from dead, decaying things. And again, I just hate that glare, but I'm gonna zoom just a bit more and we'll see if we can get a closer look in here sans reflexion. So you can see down here there's there are a couple of types of algae growing in and amongst the crypts, the Saswasertang, the gosh what is that over there? It's not hornwort, it's a um, that's something that was sold to me as Lindophila sessiflora by another hobbyist. I, I purchased it on eBay, and it is not Limnophila sessiflora. I have yet to positively identify it, but I've had that plant or the species growing in a couple of tanks for maybe three years, still unidentified. Um, challenges of, of aquatics hobbying. But this little gem is not a challenge. This is easy peasy. I would encourage any of you who have or can find something like this. I'm gonna back up. There are lots of things that you can use. You can use stuff like that, stuff like that, stuff like that, any of this kind of stuff. And yeah, thanks for hanging out with me in my bathroom for a second. Uh, this empty jar. I thought that would make something. Now, granted, it's not beautiful. Um, this was probably a peanut butter jar. This one, mixed nuts. Uh, these jars actually fill with, with tap water and leave out for 24 hours and then refill actual aquariums or this little stuff. But generally, systems like this, I refill with used aquarium water. It's relatively high in nutrient. That's why this little thing has algae is because I just give it a used aquarium water that's already high in nutrients. It's already got the fertilizer and stuff. I don't have to add anything but water and light. And then I remove the surface scuzz. Now, that surface film is probably something that these little creatures are also eating, but it forms a, a water to atmosphere barrier which blocks gaseous exchange. There's a lot more happening there. The biology in that surface film does play a part in gas exchange, but to be perfectly honest with you, it is a deep, deep topic, and it varies entirely depending on what that particular surface film is, what it's composed of, what's living in it. And since I haven't taken the time yet to positively identify my surface film microbiology, I just kind of roll with it and remove it from time to time, but I don't kill it. I actually pour it into other filtered aquariums nearby. That is very useful biology. All of that biology plays a part in any aquatic system. Biodiversity leans to stability, and I was trying to say lends, L-E-N-D-S, to stability. Sorry for just getting tongue-tied, but I think this is one of my coolest aquatic systems. It's not my smallest, it's certainly not my biggest. I doubt it's even a full gallon, maybe three quarters of a gallon, but it just rocks. And I find that my guests will sit here at length and view these little guys. I do too, and apparently you have as well. So we're rolling on the nine minute mark uh, talking about this little thing, but I'll probably cut it there for the day. If you enjoy this sort of thing, please give me a like or subscribe, leave a comment, feel free to ask questions, and I will answer anything to the best of my ability. You can also find me on the Arkansas Planet Aquarium Club. It is not restricted to Arkansas natives, but most of us are in this area, so we trade and interact and go to swaps and things together. But feel free to uh, join that on Facebook, but do, if you would, give me a like, subscribe. I'm to my knowledge, just a couple of uh, subscribers away from monetization. So thank you all for your support. Love you guys. Happy fish keeping, happy, happy plant raising, and get out there and do some organics. Catch you later.